Right. Okay, so basically, the other night was the most mental night of my life. My name's Cara, with a K, except everyone in the office always calls me Karen or Karen. I don't even bother to correct them. I'm already resigned to the fact that no one knows or cares who I am, except there's one man who always gets my name right, and his name's Gavin. Gavin Locks. Wouldn't mind him opening me up, if you know what I mean. So anyways, on Thursday, Gavin comes up to us and he says, Oh, hey, Cara. We're going on a works night out. Was wondering if you fancied coming along. Now, normally, I would avoid that kind of thing like the plague. I'm absolutely fine if I'm in a group of two, you know, like this. But if I'm in a group of four or more, then I just freeze up and I go dead quiet. So I tend to avoid social situations where I can. But seeing as Gavin's asked me, I just thought, oh, maybe I'll pull him. Maybe he'll realise that he likes me and then we'll get married and we'll have three kids. And we'll buy a cottage in the Lake District or something like that. <laughs> so I turn around and I say, yeah. All right, then. Cool. Now, I'm normally a sensible type, but on the night, I decide I'm going to wear a low cut dress, you know, <laughs> show off a bit of the old cleavage. Not that my cleavage is old. Well, no older than me. Anyway. Sorry, where was I? All oh, right. Yeah. OK, so I turn up and there's like 15 people there. And I think, oh, heck, right, you can do this. <laughs> think of the cottage, Cara. <laughs> Except when I'm looking around, I don't actually see him anywhere. I get chatting to a nice woman called Polly. She works in finance. And we have a right laugh about the fact that we both had hummus for lunch. <laughs> what a coincidence. Except now it's quarter to eight. And I still don't see him anywhere, so I decide to ask. <laughs> so, um, where do you suppose Gavin's got to? <laughs> oh, Gavin's not coming? What? Why? He's got a date? Oh, my heart does that little lurch, you know, the disappointed one that we all know. Oh, right. Cool. Good for him. I shout over the music. Well, then, I think. Fuck him. Although it's not really his fault. He won't know I like him. Blokes often don't. You have to make a massive sign and write on it, I like you, in massive letters and hit them over the head with it. Metaphorically, obviously. <laughs> So then Polly offers to buy me a Smirnoff ice. And, you know, I'm not a big drinker, but I say yes to calm my nerves. And then I hear Rochelle saying she's going to get me drunk. So she gets in a massive round of shots. Now, again, normally I'd be like, no way. But the Smirnoff ice has gone to my head because, you know, I, I didn't really eat before because I was dead nervous. So I'm just like, yeah, cool. Whatever. Shots. Brilliant. <laughs> so, by this time, a lot of people have actually peeled off. So I'm left with Polly, Dan, Paul and Rochelle. And Rochelle is a notorious flirt, especially with the women. Suddenly, the song Summer Nights, you know, from Greece, comes on. And I remember a routine that we learnt in school, so I start showing Polly how to do the dance. And then Rochelle gets in some more shots. Sours this time. Tropical ones. I have to. Dan offers me a drag of a cigarette. I say no. Rochelle is telling the doorman that I'm drunk for the first time, which isn't actually true, but people make assumptions when you're a bit quiet, don't they? And then the doorman is asking Polly 
if she's out on the pool tonight in a really weird, creepy, lecherous way. It's obvious that Rochelle is friends with the doorman and comes here all the time. Rochelle gets in some more shots. Sambuca. They taste like aniseed. So then I go off to the bathroom with Polly and she lends me a bit of lipstick. She tells me how she broke her sister's lipstick and now she can't give it back. Then Rochelle buys me a red wine. Polly tells me how she is a massive virgin, even though she's 24. Paul tells me I've got nice tits. And he's allowed to say that because he's gay. Then Rochelle buys me a vodka Red Bull. I'm going to end up in bed with Rochelle. I just know it. Polly tells me how she gets really giggly when she's drunk. Dan pronounces my name wrong. Mr Brightside plays. Rochelle calls me Karen. Then, suddenly, Rochelle snogs Paul. Paul snogs Dan. Dan snogs me. And then I do a slut drop. Polly says, yes, Karen. My name is fucking Kara. So then I pay £17 for another drink and another round of shots for me and Rochelle. Sours again. I have cherry this time. Rochelle asks me if I'm poor and I say, no, no, I'll pay. Then Dan offers me a drag of a cigarette and I say, hell yeah, baby. And then I black out. Now, I don't know if you've ever blacked out, but like the doctor, you get to travel in space and time. I wake up in a hospital corridor a few hours later. It's freezing cold and nothing feels like it's real. The sick on my bed. Oops, I wonder who's done that. <laughs> I'm telling someone that I don't normally get drunk and I'm not a big drinker. A nurse is telling me to be sick somewhere other than on my dress. She's really close to my face now and she's telling me I can go home with my friend. I'm really worried that I've lost my glasses, but Rochelle tells me they're in my bag, thankfully. <laughs> Rochelle is also absolutely smashed. Apparently she's rang my mum and she's been having many chats with her. So now we're in a taxi. And Rochelle's telling me not to throw up in the taxi and that I owe her four quid. But we'll sort it out in the morning. So now I'm back in my apartment. No, I'm not. I'm by the lift in my apartment. And I'm on the phone to my mum. And I'm telling her how she is my best friend in the whole wide world. And that I hate men and I'm going to become a lesbian. She's telling me to get my bin and to put my bin on my bed in case I'm sick. I'm sick. And then I'm asleep. So then I wake up the next morning, still pissed, wrapped in a blue blanket, with a text from the hospital that says, would you recommend NHS hospitals? Well, I'd bloody love to, but I can't remember it. And then I just thought, how irresponsible is that? I'm 27. I need just to grow up. You know, taking up a bed, it's just awful. And then I just looked. All the sick I had in my hair, it was disgusting. I just wanted to chop it all off and my immaturity with it. I just wanted to be a new, more mature version of myself. So, to cut a long story short, I'd like a bob, please. <laughs>